The Jeremiah E. Burke High School serves students in 9th through 12th grade in the Dorchester neighborhood of Boston, Massachusetts. Burke was identified as a turnaround school in 2010. Massachusetts turnaround schools that made significant improvements implemented four key practices. These schools created vibrant communities of practice. They were deliberate about instruction. They used data to meet student needs and they established safe environments in which to learn. At Burke High School, this practice is especially strong. When you consider the implications of poverty on life, on learning, on being, you just can't escape those harsh realities of life within poverty. And so those things don't just roll off a student's back those things become part of their experiences, part of who they are as learners. Coming to America is, was a really hard thing for me. When I came here, it was very tough. I didn't like it. And education was really challenging until I got to the Burke. We had to not only have reinforcements for academics and kind of meet students where they're at and build them, but we also had to build them from within. Mark the angle, set up the ratio. Mark the angle, set up the ratio. So of course our focus is on academics, but particularly given the population of the Burke, where many students, for example, have experienced trauma at some point in their life, we have become very deliberate and purposeful in making sure that students' social and emotional needs are met because I think as a staff we all recognize that if those needs are not met then their performance in the classroom will suffer. Being here I've met the most amazing teachers that not that don't see me as a student but see me as their daughters, family member because they take care of me, they make sure I learn what I need to learn and they also make sure that I, I become a great young woman. Prior to turnaround, attendance was clearly an issue for the Burke. Our attendance was in the low 80%. So we incorporated Youth Development Network, who is through Public Health Commission, to help us. And they provide case managers who actually do home visits. So it's a win-win when we can actually send you know, a case manager to a door knocking on the door um, saying, hey, where you been? Um, we miss you. We want you to come to school. What can we do to help you? Upon arrival, my first time coming here, I looked at the data and I was like, oh goodness, 525 suspensions in one year? That's ridiculous. 125 of them happened the first month of school when students were sporting new backpacks and new shoes and everything was brand new and all they wanted was for people to see them and compliment them on their being. They didn't want to be invisible. So I promised to not do that but to teach them what the expectations were of them as a student. So our suspension has consistently declined. I think now we're less than 20 for the year. I would say that our vibe is very much, it's, it's very student friendly. We have students who we know have been marginalized and have not received the kind of supports that they need. And so the number one priority is helping get them engaged and creating a safe space for them to feel a part of a community. Once we get them in, then it's about increasing the academic rigor for them, giving them the academic supports they need to be successful because they've chronically been failed through their educational lives. So when I was introduced to, a, to high school, I thought, oh, this is gonna be so much pressure. I'm gonna have to do all this work. Like, and then I came here and it was a lot of work, but there was a lot of help for that lot of work. You weren't just on your own in a sense where you were le left out in the cold. I think the relationship you form with students is incredibly crucial. And I think that students need to know that you care about them. And I think kids can only be pushed once they trust you and once they know that you have their best interests at heart. Ladies and gentlemen, the way we are going to get this started is each group is going to share about a different photograph. I think it's all about consistency, like in every way, you know, showing up every single day, super prepared, on time, like enthusiastic, positive, um, and I think they really respond to that. Think about incoming students coming into a high school class on a 
5.9 grade point level, sixth grade level. And then think about the prescribed curriculum identified by now the Common Core. You want somebody in the fifth grade to jump into a ninth grade curriculum. It's a big leap. And so much of the work that we had to do was structure that leap. And so we came up with a new schedule uh, and we did these 80 minute blocks and we call it a four by four by one schedule. And we taught that. We didn't assume that everybody knew how to manage 90 minutes or 80 minutes. So that was hurdle number one. So now that we've got extra time and we've taught teachers how to strategically use this time, we can take on more content. Half the students needed a lot more time with this and half the students were pretty quick with it. Mm -hmm. So what I ended up doing was I split the class into the students who needed some more time and I had them working with City Year to finish their arguments. And then the other students who were all set, I had them work on feedback. Because what I'm really hoping to assess ultimately is does learning this text structure impact their ability to understand their peers' arguments and understand other arguments that they read? Because I'm thinking about, okay, this is writing skills, but it's also hopefully supporting their comprehension. This year we've been focusing on reasoning and how to increase like critical thinking and analysis. So kind of not just the what and the where and the who, but the how and the why and comparing and contrasting, which is what we were trying to do today in class, right? Thinking about things from different perspectives, really working on you know, using evidence to support our arguments, kind of trying to expand our arguments and not just make it about right and wrong, but you know, think bigger, think more critically. In our community, we're able to be safe, psychologically safe. And psychological safety with accountability is key to getting this work done. It's the same kind of environment that a teacher would want to provide her students in order for them to feel comfortable enough to take risks principals or leaders, they must provide that for their teachers. The, the staff culture is huge here. Going through a tough change, it definitely helps to have colleagues around who you have those relationships with. That collegiality is priceless in terms of being able to make movement forward for our students because that's why we're all here. You can come out a turnaround. It's hard work, um, but it's, you're not working any harder than you did before. Um, I worked at the Burke previously, and I feel like I worked hard every day as well, but you work differently, but you also incorporate a team, so you're not, you're not alone in this work. You can't do it alone. You have to have everyone around you, and everyone has to be able to pick up the slack because we all have amazing strengths.